Our Cavaliers and how they're going to win the NBA Finals clip is up. We bring you two NBA Finals previews because guess what? Yes, the Warriors can also win the NBA Finals this year. Uh, actually, they're the favorite to win the Finals. There's 75% chance of winning Game 1, and then I think a 68% chance of winning Game 2, and then still the favorite when they go back to Cleveland to win Game 3. Uh, the 73-9 and nine Warriors are trying to complete a historic season, and they are four wins away from doing so. And how are they going to get those four wins, Francis? Well, some may say it's going to be reliant on the backcourt shooting effectively, efficiently, just even where they're at. If they shot 42% combined the whole series, I think that might be enough to do it. If they shoot lights out like they've been doing at times where they look like they're going to shoot 80%, this series is over in four games, uh, unfortunately for LeBron and the Cavs. But how they're going to do this is very much reliant on their team defense. I think a lot comes down to Draymond Green Aye. and Andre Iguodala Aye. and what lineup Steve Kerr is going to run. Last season, Andre Iguodala, you're going to hear that name all over. I got the NBA blog from today. When times get tough, the Warriors turn to Iguodala. But here's the problem with that, right? And we mentioned this all during the Cavs clip, how they're going to solve the Iguodala problem, the Draymond Green problem. The issue with this headline, the issue is that the Cavs know that the secret weapon from last season was Andre Iguodala. You think Steve Kerr's just going to use the same weapon twice? I don't think so. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on Andre Iguodala. <laughs> That's how the saying is always gone. That is it. It's rewritten. Francis, there's a billion different X factors. Some could say it's the backcourt. Some could say it's Iguodala. What do you think? the Warriors are going to do to win the series. So, if you could hear when you were mentioned that point, I was giving you the over-enthusiastic agreement sound from Scotland. Aye. 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 Because I'm glad you mentioned it. Everyone in their dug, dog, Scotland. Dag. Just uh, like alluded, to the <laughs> alluded to the fact that Golden State won against OKC because Steph Curry and Clay Thompson went off and scored a ridiculous amount of points in the final game. That's true. But there was, uh, I think... It, the series was harder than what it should have been for Golden State because Draymond Green went missing in a lot of those games. Oh, yes, he did. Draymond Green, we give him so much credit throughout the regular season. He is the X Factor. He's the number two in that team. He doesn't get enough credit. And then he goes, he's not kicking people. He's not performing well. He's letting hit that passion that drives him overwhelm him and potentially hinder his game. He's been given a second chance now. And I don't think he gets as involved in this finals, he's still going to be passionate. He's still going to drive. But when you're watching the Cleveland Cavaliers and how they are so much more physical than the Raptors and their outside shooting plays a huge part, but their rebounding offensively can be detrimental to any team that they play against, that's where Draymond Green has to be effective. He has to be effective in the paint. He has to be effective when he's rebounding. He has to be effective in, with his decision-making when he's in possession of the ball to free up more room for Steph Curry. That comes collectively with Golden State as a whole. Mm -hmm. I think their decision-making at times against Oklahoma was so out of character. Yes. I think that there were so many times... Specifically, I always mention at Game 2 when they were just rushing their plays, which is something that we never really seen with Golden State regular season because they were so confident. But Draymond Green let me down a lot because I put so much, I would say, emphasis on how good he has been all season. And now, as I mentioned, he's got that chance now to kind of right those wrongs against the Cleveland Cavs because they are a physical team. They almost al they allude to the fact that they play big, but then when you've got big men who like Kevin Love who can pull away and just drain threes, it's going to come down to that offensive rebound. And you talked about Tristan Thompson, Ooh. and I'm glad you brought him up. Yeah. He is a warrior in the paint and, all the, and with his offensive rebound. Draymond Green needs to be matching him every step of the way. He needs to be matching him in there. And I want to touch on a couple of things more offensively, but I want to get your thoughts on that, those thoughts and then go back to the other yeah, thoughts. Yeah, Tristan Thompson is a, a, maybe like the best offensive rebounding specialist. And I don't, like you watch the tape, it's just because it seems like he wants it more. But if you watch closely, it's his footwork. Anticipation his footwork as well. under the rim, his anticipation to get those rebounds. And just a high basketball IQ in that specific sense to which he kind of, he has a good feel for where that ball's coming off the rim of the background, backboard. He can kind of tell where a shot's going to trail off to if it's not going in. That's high IQ basketball. It's also the type of player that LeBron must love, absolutely yeah. love to play basketball with. JR as well, because then he's just like, I'll shoot it. Uh, Tristan Thompson's going to Well, it, it, it's a, it makes a great equation. Yeah. JR's going to shoot this, probably not going to go in if he's not, if he's not uh, warm, but at least we can get it back to JR to shoot it again yeah. and again and, and again. again. <laughs> no, 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 yes! Goes. All right, but uh, in terms of the, uh, yeah, how are you going to solve the Tristan Thompson rebounding uh, problem? I don't think you are. I think he's still going to find a way to grab five, six, seven, eight contest. offensive yeah. rebounds. You just got to play physical. Don't kick him in the nuts. 
All right, you don't need to play dirty. You don't need to DDT him. It was a fucking uh, blockbuster night part two. Run the jewels, DDT him, and then like Jake the Snake him. I'll DDT him in the mausoleum. Like you don't need to do that, Draymond. <laughs> you can leave that out of the out of the uh, out of the game. Um, but of course, look, everyone's eyes are on Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. Maybe Klay Thompson has to shoot lights out again to bail out the Warriors to keep them alive to pull them off life support. But don't forget how deep and how experienced the Warriors bench is because they never, because uh, the starters weren't playing in the fourth quarter all season long. Right, the, the Cavs only go about nine deep uh, total, so four players off the bench. The Warriors throw those weird, crafty Spurs-like questions at you. Most Spates can hit threes. Most Spates can hit threes. That's a thing we're saying in 2016. Harrison Barnes. Sense. Harrison Barnes. That's a fantastic. The athletic wing. The, the third quarter against Oklahoma, Draymond Green sat out with the rest. Steph Curry sat out with the rest. Clay Thompson sat out for parts of it. And it was reliant on Livingston just pulling shots out yes, of nowhere. Had a phenomenal it. third quarter against Oklahoma. And, think of, and look, what have we seen Livingston already do in this playoffs? Well, remember, the Warriors, they're lucky, right? They're, mm. they're the luckiest team ever. They get calls. They lost their MVP, but they're lucky. They rubbed the they genies the, and other they, people get injured. they got the Blazers. Other, yeah, exactly. But they lost their MVP. Sean Livingston might not be Steph Curry, but he sure as hell can handle his own. Yeah and at least get a, a positive plus minus before he leaves the court. Maybe it's only plus one or two, but it's much better than coming on the court being minus 10 yeah. and then leaving, of course. So uh, that bench is going to be interesting because they don't need to play their starters as many minutes as the Cavs will have to. And I think LeBron's going to be playing 44 minutes, 42 minutes a game, even with healthy Kyrie, healthy Kevin Love. So you got to keep your eye on You can't let LeBron just abuse your bench. Yeah. That's a big one. So um, that is a question I was going to throw to you as I threw the other question. The previous couple, you can LeBron check. Gonna... How, how do you, like, it's an impossible question. It's very similar. How do you defend Messi? How do you defend Ronaldo? It's uh, just a game of space. You just try and, what I imagine in sports, which isn't rocket science, it's all about how you make a shot a little bit more difficult because the best players in the world will always find ways to get around you when it comes to their respective sport. That's why they're the best. But um, when it comes to LeBron James, Jason, how how did, how did Golden State try and nullify his space? How do you cut off that driving lane, which he loves well, to go and do? To cut off the driving lane, um, you need to put on 150 pounds. All right, Aguadala, <laughs> I'll send you a protein shake. Wear You're already a big man. Wear steel-toed boots <laughs> and just actually just like act, like pin yourself to the ground. I what you do is you get Donald Trump in. You build, build a, a wall <laughs> of most expensive wall we've ever seen. We'll make the Cavs you pay for it. <laughs> it's going to be huge. <laughs> going to make, going to make... Cavs pay for the wall. Gonna make Adam Silver <laughs> pay for the wall. Um, how do you stop LeBron James? Well, Iguodala stopped him enough last season. Mm-hmm. You gotta contest. You gotta make him shoot. You have to find a way to make him shoot and keep him on the outside. And uh, Iguodala's pretty good at actually flopping. He's like a good actor at it. So you gotta be able to be you. You have to be willing to hit the deck every time he goes into the paint. And as many people are gonna look at that and go, "Oh, you're just gonna try to fish for calls." It works. That's a great thing. You're stopping LeBron from getting to the, to the, to the, to the rack because he's going to do it over and over and over again. And if LeBron's going to get to the foul line, if the calls are going his way, the Cavs have a very good shot at winning those games. If the calls aren't going his way and he can't finish at the rim, the Warriors will have a good shot. Obviously, the two biggest players on the floor at all times, even when they're off the floor, is Curry and LeBron James. But there's always somebody else who steps up. Last year was Andre Iguodala and Tristan Thompson, mm-hmm. even Della Vadova in a game where they pulled one out. This year, I think it's going to be Klay Thompson for the Warriors. I think he's just on this hot run of form. And I think Channing Frye somehow is going to be a lifeline off the bench when they need scoring. The Raptors never had it. The Cavs did. If they need scoring, Channing Frye going 3 of 4 from the three-point line. Only nine points. Those could be very needed nine points. The, predictions. Uh, oh, predictions first, but I just got this in from Steve Kerr, actually. He let me know his secret weapon, which we were alluding to. Yes. He's going to bring in the old lady from the previous game where she shouted at LeBron. <laughs> Suck it up, LeBron! And they've got him, her, they've got her in courtside just to throw him a few curveballs. A few curveballs. You just need someone whispering in his ear, shave your hairline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no, this is in again. They are bringing Lance Stevenson in just to blow in his ear a little bit towards the end. And with that combined, it may nullify LeBron James. But my prediction, I'm going for Golden State in five. I actually like that. That's a really bold prediction, but I actually like that a lot. Um, I've been making T-charts of how to figure out who to predict for the series. 
my head tells me the Golden State Warriors will win the series in six games. Uh, my heart and my gut is kind is it really is pulling for LeBron James because I am a huge LeBron supporter. So I want the Cavs to win it in seven. We all want to see a seven-game series. That would be great. But if I just let's be let's be bold. Let's be let's put a sports hat on. We've analyzed the analytics nonstop since that we've done so much NBA. Golden State in six games. I have to go with it, even though I want LeBron to do it in four or six, because then they do it on their home court, and that would be a great scene. Uh, and then we can all stop with the with the LeBron bullshit forever and ever and ever. But if you want, we can be ESPN analysts if you want, and we'll bring in our little uh, men in black, our little men in black pen. Uh, as soon as the, the Cavs win the first game, and we'll just press the button, beep, and I'm like, Cavs are going to win this game. Cavs are going to win in four. And then when Golden State wins it, pfft, it's going to be Golden State. State. I mean, are you crazy? That's the way it is. No, we'll stick by our guns. And I think that it, so Golden State in five, Golden State in six. Let us know what you think in the comments. Is it going to be Cleveland? I don't know what else to say. I just want to see the fucking tip off. Hit me with the game already and hit us in the comments. Jason Rubin 91. Francis almost come back. I think it was two of the best clips we've ever done ever.